Is China edging closer to the brink of a manufacturing apocalypse? Will its manufacturing sector completely capsize and collapse? How will the world reel under the current Chinese crisis? Will it reorganize itself successfully around China's loss of status as a major manufacturer on the world's economic stage? Join us as we take stock of China's current catastrophic situation and what it could spell for the rest of the globe. China and the Western world are entangled in a tough tango for economic clout. As geopolitical tensions skyrocket between China and the West, Western companies are faced with a tough decision. Should they offshore production from China and take their business elsewhere? Admittedly, Western firms are navigating an economic minefield when it comes to cutting through China's seesawing economic policies. From regulations that fluctuate like a pendulum at the drop of a hat, and opaque laws to some drastic and draconian COVID-19 measures, China has flipped the economic chessboard to its disadvantage. However, that's not all. All this leads to the biggest challenge yet that sits like an obstacle on the economic path of Western companies operating in China. The American Chamber of Commerce, also known as AmCham, has spelt out these challenges in their 2023 annual business survey, with rising labor costs being a significant factor, along with all the other economic disadvantages and red flags that we've recounted so far. China really needs to send out some economic feelers and reassess the direction in which the economic wind is blowing, with Western firms now either cutting back on production or pulling out from the region altogether. Apple supplier Goertix's former vice president, Kazuyoshi Yoshinagawa, was on record in the very recent past stating that Apple suppliers were looking to make tracks out of China. That's a decision no one can take lightly. Guratech happens to be a major player in Apple's acoustic product supply. All this chaos comes in the aftermath of the recent political and economic shakeups that made U.S.-China relations take a rapid nosedive. It doesn't help China's economic cause that there are major challengers waiting in the wings to topple it from its dominant spot in the supply chain hierarchy in the form of India and Vietnam. Apple's supply chain in China has been struck with massive jolts over a span of the last three years. The U.S. tech firm had pumped up some pretty painstaking efforts to assemble a top-tier supply chain across the region over a considerable period. Looks like all that might just crumble and come crashing to the ground like a wobbly house of cards given the acidic nature of the technological rivalry and geopolitical tensions between the two regions. China's harsh COVID-19 measures have only served to add fuel to the raging fire, which might engulf China's manufacturing sector in flames. The disastrous results are quite obvious. China's Guertech and LuxShare, along with Taiwan's Foxconn Technology Group, look more than happy to pour a considerable chunk of investment into India and Vietnam. What do you think? Will these countries mint more business and make hay while the sun shines as China loses favor with the West? It all seems to be a bit hush-hush and under the radar, but whispers have been in the rounds in economic circles that Apple, in fact, has requested its suppliers to move shop and locate its factories to other regions. The reason is not all that difficult to figure out, given the turbulent history that coincides with Apple's release of its iPhone 14 last year. As it so happens, Foxconn had to juggle the production of Apple's iPhone orders while tiptoeing around China's stringent COVID-19 measures and managed to drop all the plates. The move tanked in an epic manner and led to some pretty volatile headbutting, which saw a mass exit of workers. What transpired next was nothing short of disastrous, with production creeping at a relative snail's pace at the global numero uno iPhone factory casting a gloomy economic shadow on the fast approaching holiday season. Has China reached the end of its tether as a manufacturing hub? Well, only time can tell. China's ill-thought-out COVID-19 policy came down on it with full force like bad karma. It fueled some pretty heavy-duty civil clashes and mass firings which numbered in the thousands, with the electronic and tech sectors bearing the brunt of it. Figures from the month of April show plummeting orders as China sets out to steady its footing after its massive economic gaffes. As it is, China's GDP has sustained a direct hit with abysmal figures as low as 4%, which had been unheard of, at least within the span of a generation. By now, Chinese companies have also taken a leaf out of Western books by channeling investments in Southeast Asia. 
This will not only allow them to evade trade tariffs, but also the chaos that political tensions and sanctions will inevitably unleash. They're also making some pretty savvy moves to maintain their economic ties with their American and European clients on the up and up by transferring their operations to the mainland. So where exactly are the Chinese firms headed? Let's do a very quick rundown of all the countries that look poised to capitalize on China's losses. While Chinese manufacturers are seeking to locate operation bases in proximity to their customers, the Indians are also playing their cards with a lot of foresight and are making all the right moves to pull in Chinese firms that are looking to have a piece of the Indian economic pie. Let's not forget that Chinese giants such as the car manufacturer SAIC and renowned names such as Oppo and Vivo already have a significant presence in India. Thailand is another country that might earn heavy dividends if businesses continue to move out of China. China's producer of solar panels, Jinko Solar, has moved its supply chain partially to Thailand in order to reap the benefits of minimal labor costs. Some solar panel manufacturers are looking to Vietnamese shores to relocate and expand. Manufacturers of car parts are also caving under the demands of their foreign clients and moving operations to the sunny Thai island. The Gap, Inc. has also jumped into the bandwagon that's moving out of China. It has pumped at least $150 million in Central America in an effort to substitute labor as well as supply from China. Investment in Central America saves the clothing giant from the tedious process of scrutinizing its myriad of suppliers in China and doing due diligence. Previously, though, its cotton material was sourced from Xinjiang. Going back to rising labor costs, labor costs have witnessed a steady rise in China over the past decade. For employees in manufacturing, figures touch around $12,000 per year in 2022 alone. The U.S.-China Business Council survey last year showcased inflated labor costs as one of the prime concerns for a whopping 83% of American companies. The Europeans trailed behind them, although with a more contained approach, with 46% citing pumped up labor costs as a challenge, bagging a spot in the top three of their concerns. However, a slight nuance has to be borne in mind. The skills of the labor force also play a pretty significant role in tipping the scales in a country's favor. Take India and Vietnam, for instance. Vietnam labor seems to be lagging behind China both in terms of skill and infrastructure, although the pay scale for both the Indian and Vietnamese is far lower than that of the Chinese. China also surpasses both India and Vietnam when it comes to its labor force's productivity. Looks like China's not ready to hand over the baton and the manufacturing stakes without a fight. In an AmCham China survey carried out in 2023, about 55% of the participants saw China's COVID-19 measures as a formidable challenge atop their list. Another factor that earns the investors ire when it comes to investment opportunities in China are the constricting regulatory mechanisms that put investors in a financial chokehold. China's track record when it comes to the protection of intellectual property rights is not too stellar either and poses a major risk to Western firms looking to sustain their business. Chinese businesses also enjoy an edge over their Western counterparts in terms of interest and tax rates, which strikes another point off from the Western perspective. So what does the future hold for China and its cascade into a manufacturing downturn? According to most opinions, Western companies do have a preference to stay on in China. After all, Rare would be the organization that would want to pull the manufacturing plug out of the region where they had devoted decades to establish a supply chain. Think about it. Would you like to abandon all of your hard work and let all your efforts go to waste if you had devoted a lifetime to build something up from scratch? It doesn't really take an Einstein to figure that one out. However, Western firms do need to prepare for a number of eventualities, both negative and positive, that might arise out of China's current economic and political climate. Until next time.